what's going on guys it's December 1st it's coming up so if you want to have a chance to go ahead and answer the short questions take you less than a minute and then set up a phone call plus there's something else that's coming up there's something else that's coming up and if you want to know about that there's a special list for the people who want to know about that you can get on that list by going below hitting the questionnaire and subscribing all right so let's get into today's video yesterday i just kind of laid back in the cut it was thanksgiving and something just said you should get up and go out and i went out and i saw some things kroger was open whole foods was open Publix was closed a lot of chinese restaurants were open a lot of stuff was open and this is the thing that got me Publix was open and Publix was packed. I didn't get out and go in there, but just judging by the parking lot, it looked like a normal shopping day. And then I rolled around some more and I, I literally saw here and there businesses open, a lot of businesses were closed, a lot of businesses were open. And Thanksgiving, as I used, I used to know it, is it's over. It's completely and utterly over. Let's kind of go back when I was in high school, elementary school and high school. Thanksgiving, everything was closed. Everything. Even some of the gas stations were closed. The grocery stores were closed. Um, and the thing that got me is like Thanksgiving is forever changed. It's completely different. Um, the number of Black Friday sales emails I'm getting. Everyone's having the Black Friday sales. Everyone's having massive discounts. This like started about three weeks ago. And, you know, Thanksgiving, the way I used to know it, and I'm gonna kinda take you guys back in time. Typically, what people would do before Thanksgiving, because there were some service stations open, but not a lot. They would gas up, they would go to the grocery store, they would do all this stuff beforehand. And there would be big meals. Uh, one of the things we used to do is go down to my Aunt Evelyn's house and have Thanksgiving dinner. And it would be me and you know my cousins and stuff, and it, it was a lot of people. And we would just uh, sit around, my Uncle Sam would get drunk. <laughs> And he would get funny. He would get hilarious. And that moment of family togetherness is pretty much, it's not 100% disappeared, but we're getting to that point where it is not the same. It is not the same, it is just not the uh, same thing that is going on today. It's just not. And like I said, the Thanksgiving that I grew up in, the Thanksgiving I used to enjoy, and Thanksgiving was my most favorite holiday. Thanksgiving was my most favorite holiday because, you know, back then I was a chow and hound you know, four plates of Thanksgiving food, you know, the dressing, the turkey, the ham, the biscuits, the pumpkin pie, the pecan pie, the chocolate cakes. It, it was just crazy. It was just a really, really crazy time. And yesterday, I just kind of took a few moments out before I enjoyed the day with friends. And then I just kind of went out and just looked and just kind of soaked up what was going on and just looked at the current landscape. And it, it was just amazing because what is happening is we are moving away from a nuclear family. It's completely gone. Um, you know, what'd you do for Thanksgiving? 
Did you go out? Did you eat? Did you enjoy yourself? What did you do for Thanksgiving? Um, some people still have family Thanksgiving. And this is part of the stuff that I miss about my, my dear business partner uh, for about 12 years. I would do Thanksgiving with them and their Thanksgiving was my business partner, her sister, her brother. It was, I would say seven families coming together. It would be 30 something to 40 something people, everyone bringing dishes. We sit around, talk smack and stuff. It was, it was just a really, really good time. And I feel privilege to actually had experienced those moments. I feel that was a special bond, a special thing to have that because now, you know, you still do have families that do throw down like that, but nowhere as many because when I was a kid, everybody was throwing down like that. It wasn't just like, Oh, this just one thing. No, no, it was all families. All families were throwing down like that. And uh, one of the things that I'm beginning to understand is why a lot of people want to leave the United States of America. Um, typically, the reports are about 9 million people a year leave the United States to move to somewhere else in the world. And if you have a strong, solid family structure that has a Thanksgiving, like the ones that I, I grew up with and attended, it's going to be really hard for you to leave the United States of America. Because one of the things that I, I did notice is Thanksgiving morning, I was awakened by a weed eater. See, all my neighbors are crazy about their yards. The, 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 they're like, there's so many different lawn crews around here. And on Thanksgiving day, there was not one, not two, but three different landscaping crews working Thanksgiving morning. And I, one of them I saw, there was a crew of three. And I'm just sitting there like, and once again, they were not American. They were all Hispanic. They were all Hispanic. And I sat there and I thought about that and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. This is just another day for them. This is not a special day. This is not a holiday. They're not getting holiday pay. This is just another day for them. And you know, what I am seeing in, in my other video where I was talking about the hostile workforce I think, well, I don't think, I know, Hispanic culture is very different than American culture. And this guy had no problem getting his other two people to come work with him on Thanksgiving day. He had no problem. And they were out here and doing the things they needed to do to get themselves situated, to make their customers' lawns beautiful. And you know, Thanksgiving hit real different yesterday. I am at a weird standpoint with myself in terms of the economy. Well, not just the economy, but I'm in a different space mentally looking at how holidays used to be and how holidays are today. And today was the day after Thanksgiving. Everything was open except um, certain, certain, certain parts weren't open. But one of the things that I am looking at with great energy and enthusiasm is the birth of 2024. Um, today I was out doing some things. And then uh, it just kind of came to me. And this is something that I'm going to announce to the people in a special email group. I'm not going to announce it in the broad email group. I'm just going to announce it in a smaller email group. 
And this is the group of people who are answering the questionnaires and you know, it's just something I'm gonna throw out, something I'm gonna throw out. So with one of the things that will happen is 2024, I believe is gonna be a very challenging year economically for a lot of people. And for people who have the determination to go out and build something, and this is one of the things that we're gonna be talking about in the, the new training, because uh, like this, this, this will start next Friday, so I gotta work on that this weekend, but one of the things that I consistently see is the number of people who fall prey to the status quo. Case in point, all of the people making the TikTok videos about how bad the economy was. And I saw a video today and this guy, I actually learned something from this guy. I actually learned something from this guy because with some of the things that I've posted online and done, I've learned a lot. And I was watching this guy and there's some other people that I'm watching and I'm beginning to notice something. I'm beginning to notice something. And it's a very important lesson that I am learning at the moment. Uh, one of the things that is happening is socially, you have people like, I'll give you an example. I was watching this video by this girl who does copywriting and she talks about copywriting. And one of the things I always do is I go down to the comment section and I saw people asking what I would say, simple questions. What is a copy page? What is a regular page? What is a funnel page? And they're asking her these questions, right? If you were to go to the Google machine, it's like, what is a fail? Bam. We're talking about maybe 15 seconds to go to Google and find out what a copy page is. The, the point I'm getting to is there are many people who are 100% unprepared to make the money that they want to make because they're 100% lazy. Now, I, I say this really, it's like they're asking her to create a video, what's the difference between a sales page and a regular page? And I'm just sitting there like, why don't you go search this out? And th this right here opened up a whole new, uh, doorway for me in terms of what people were doing and what people, because there, there's a lot of people who say, I want to make money. I want to make money online. But when you start to get into the things that you need to make money online, it gets to be very, very different. It gets to be extremely challenging for people to understand the things that they need to do to make money online because they don't want to do those things. There's a number of YouTube creators who put out amazing and awesome advice and they just don't get the views. But someone puts up a video, which this, this right here, if you're educated, and I talked about this before, puts up a video, how you can use the Google news, news feed to make 700 to $1,400 a day. They put this out here and they walk you through the process. You're gonna to go to Google news feed. You're gonna find an article. You're gonna take the article. You're gonna have the article rewritten, rewritten by Spinbot. And then you're gonna go ahead and try to sell these articles to these publications. Now, I want you to think about this. I really want you to think about this. These companies that need these articles, they're making money. Now, this is one of the things, because like I said, I, I've used AI 
And AI has a lot of limitations, a lot of limitations. And if we're not at the point, and let me go ahead and say this and be really, really clear. We're not at the point where AI is going to take over. I say we're 10, 15, maybe even 20 years from there. Because one of the things you can do with chat GPT now is make images. And, you know, it's, it's like in the next year, the image making capacity of mid journey chat GPT is just going to get better and better and better. But we're not at that point where you can just go to Google, find a news article, have AI rewrite that article and then sell this article for a lot of money. We're not at that point yet. I do believe we will get to that point, but we're not, we're not at that point yet. We're just not there yet. And one of the things that is happening is a lot of people just do not understand the situation that is happening at the moment. They just don't understand the situation, the potentials, the possibilities. There, there's no real understanding of how these things are gonna work in the future. The CEO of ChatGPT got fired, then they hired him again. It was something weird. I, I, I didn't really dive that too deep into the article, but essentially what I'm saying is like the old Thanksgiving is gone and now we're into this new economy, this new world. We're getting into new ways to make money. And what I'm saying is the average person is unprepared to make money in these new ways because they don't fully understand it. Cause like literally I go to these videos and this girl, you know, she, she did a lot of fluff talking. She didn't really get into the details and stuff. She sells a course. And the thing is, with copywriting, you need to be really, really doing it. You really need to be doing copy, trying to sell copy, trying to promote copy. This isn't something that you can kind of sneak into or, you know, uh, but one of the things that has a serious, serious um, implication is Making money online is not rocket science hard, but it's not play school simple either. And this is one of the things that people are beginning to see because just like, you know, my observations on what happened on Thanksgiving and then also now, I don't know. I'm really much more in the football than I used to be. And I think there's always been NFL games on Thanksgiving day. I think that's all that's a norm. But yesterday, there was like three NFL games, a uh, college game, Ole Miss and Mississippi State. And I don't even know what else because I didn't even search that hard. I just like literally saw there was like the NFL games were rolling. And the NFL, they got that brand on lock. I mean, the NFL YouTube channel has 12 million subscribers and they put up a video, 1.4, you know, the highlights of the game. Um, and a lot of their videos, the ads are locked in. You can't skip the ads because they know that people are going to watch these football narratives and they're not going to try to skip the ad or hit the skip. And they're going to sit there through that ad and watch it because football is that popular. Football is that such a monster. Football is such a monster. But, you know, I was just like I said, I was just out kind of looking, paying attention to what's going on. And the Thanksgiving of yesteryear is gone. It's, it's done with, it's just done with. So what we have now is the reality of the situation. And it, it's pretty, pretty interesting what's going on. It's pretty, pretty interesting. So one of the things that is happening is if you'd want to do training, and I was watching, oh, I'm kind of watching it because I, I haven't really gotten into it, but I'm gonna get into it with Dan Cole. And he asked this question, and this is the big question. It's like, if we deleted all your, your, your resources, and you had to start all over again, well, how would you start? And this is a common question because everybody wants the seasoned creator. And let, let me explain this. 
With the knowledge base that Dan Coe has, he will never go back to zero. He will never go back to zero. It's just like, you know, I had a friend who was telling me the money that these retired athletes make, they can go somewhere for a weekend, sit and sign autographs, make four or five, six thousand dollars in two hours. And they, 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 they haven't played ball in a decade or two, but they, their fan base is still that strong. But Dan Coe will never go back to zero. And you know, that, that was one of the things because everyone is trying to figure out how to make money online and they want someone of note ability such as Dan Coe to go back to the beginning phase and like, well, this is what I would do. And I'm gonna tell you why Dan Cole could not do the same thing in the same way that he did the first time. YouTube changes, Instagram changes, a lot of stuff changes. And with these changes comes changes in the audience and how audience responds to content. So he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He would just have to keep evolving and manipulating and make changes as he moves forward. The YouTube that I started on in 2009 doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. And with that, I will say this is the best time to start a brand new YouTube channel in history because YouTube is pushing new channels like I've never seen before. It is amazing what YouTube is doing. I was found a guy who has a channel that's six months old. No, it's older than six months. I think it's nine months old. He makes $4,000 a month from his YouTube channel. He doesn't have 100,000 subscribers. He's got 14,000 subscribers, but he gets a lot of views. And the views are where the money comes from. Views is where the AdSense money comes from. Views is the, where the affiliate money comes from. So with one of the things that you have to understand, I mean, he built a 50,000 plus side income without fancy cameras. He uses a smartphone. That's it, a smartphone. So the things that you can do today is amazing. And this is one of the things we're gonna get into the training. And if you want to get the special message, you have to go in, hit the training, the answer the questions, set up an appointment. And even though this thing is gonna start fr next Friday, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna start. There's a lot of things that we're gonna get into. So with that, if you want it, go below, get into that stuff, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.